Hey, I wanted to let you know that I've launched a podcast called The Writer's Mind. This podcast is not about story theory. It's about philosophy, psychology, and worldview building so that you can become a critical thinker and a stronger writer. Click the first link below to watch on YouTube or listen on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Fight Club is one of those films that keeps hanging around in the cultural psyche, even though it was released more than two decades ago. The reason it stayed with us is because of the philosophical ideas the film deals with. So what are those ideas? How did Fight Club come to be such a memorable, impactful story? And how can you apply the same ideas to create your own story? Today we're taking a look at this concept as I break down Fight Club's core philosophical conflict and explain why the film became a cult classic. Let's begin. When we enter the world of Fight Club, we are quickly given the worldview of the main character. When deep space exploration ramps up, it'll be the corporations that name everything. This world is one of numbness, where nothing happens, where nothing is important, and everything is fake. Life is simply passing by, with no purpose and no reason. What kind of dining set defines me as a person? The modern capitalist American system has created a world where we all work jobs for mega corporations that are completely unfulfilling. This is your life, and it's ending one minute at a time. The narrator has an especially depressing job. He is constantly traveling because of his job, which means his life is a constant state of shallow events. Single serving sugar, single serving cream, single pat of butter. The people I meet on each flight, they're single serving friends. The film starts here and gives us its basic presuppositions, that we exist within an artificial culture built by us, where everything is shallow and nothing we do holds any meaning. This is our starting point. Then, our narrator meets a character that takes his worldview to the next level, Tyler Durden. Philosophically, Tyler is a complete rejection of the world that the narrator lives in. While the narrator feels out of sync with culture but remains in it, Tyler takes action. Tyler sees the shallow world, then takes action against it. Consumers. Right. We are consumers. We are byproducts of a lifestyle obsession. Murder, crime, poverty, these things don't concern me. What concerns me are celebrity magazines, television with 500 channels, some guy's name on my underwear. And it is here that the entrance into the new world takes place. These two characters decide to take action together. They will begin to break down the world that has been built for them. And how will they do this? They will do it through violence. I don't know why. I don't know. Never been in a fight. You? No, but th that's a good thing. No, it is not. How much can you know about yourself if you've never been in a fight? They fight for the first time. But why fighting? We exist within a society where everything has become totally safe, clean, and docile. And human beings aren't built for that world. So these characters turn to a natural physical experience, the act of fighting. Fighting helps them feel alive. It helps them break out of the clean, systemized world they've been born into. But the fighting isn't just about breaking society. The film's viewpoint is that nothing matters. It's not just about destroying society, it's about destroying themselves. Uh, Self-improvement is masturbation. No Self-destruction. When the fight was over, nothing was solved, but nothing mattered. What this film is presenting is a version of aggressive nihilism. It is a view that the world is completely meaningless. Therefore, we should act upon our internal desires to destroy our society and destroy ourselves. Reject the basic assumption of civilization, especially the importance of material possession. Now this is the first layer of the film. What's interesting is that you find a second layer to this viewpoint. And that is that the film presents fatherlessness as one of the causations for this viewpoint. We're a generation of men raised by women. I'm wondering if another woman is really the answer we need. One of the reasons the men that join Fight Club join is because they are searching for masculine leadership. And Tyler Durden becomes that masculine leader. If our fathers bailed, what does that tell you about God? No, 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 I don't. Listen to me consider the possibility that God does not like you, never wanted you, 
In all probability, he hates you. This is not the worst thing that can happen. It isn't. We don't need him. We don't like we. I gotta go. Fuck damnation, man. Fuck redemption. We are God's unwanted children. So be it. Okay, so through Tyler, the film presents the idea that the philosophical viewpoint of these characters are in part built by the absence of fathers. Without clear direction, they point themselves toward destruction. Chuck Palahniuk, the author of the Fight Club novel, elaborated on this idea in a podcast with Joe Rogan. My classic thing is that there are so few social model novels or stories for men. And if you're a man, you've got either Fight Club or you have the Dead Poet Society. Fight Club spends the first half of the story building our understanding of this aggressive, nihilistic viewpoint. And now we move on to the next level, Project Mayhem. The narrator and Tyler took the initial action based upon their philosophical beliefs. They created Fight Clubs. Now it's time to up the stakes. They take their ideology even further. They build Project Mayhem a cult-like group built to destroy the modern world and create chaos, to free people from the prison they have built for themselves. I believe the plan is to blow up the headquarters of these credit card companies and the TRW building. Why these buildings? Why credit card companies? If you erase the debt record, then we all go back to zero. You'll create total chaos. And it's here where we as the audience really get to see the conclusion of this viewpoint. And this forces us to question the ideology. Is this truly the way to live if it means actively destroying the society we have built? Should the society be torn down to build something better? What is the best way to live in the modern world? Let's analyze what this film is saying at its core. Fight Club is a film about how the society we live in isn't built for us. It's not our natural state. We have made the world too safe. We have removed meaning from our lives. We have removed our own ability to make meaningful choices. And we have removed any real leadership or system of belief from our lives. Therefore, we must destroy the world we exist within. So why did this film catch on so heavily? What made this film live on as a cult classic for two decades? Because these ideas resonated with some people who watched it. It raises ideas that legitimately must be thought about. It makes us question this artificial world we've built for ourselves. It makes us realize that every single thing we interact with in our day-to-day -day lives are built by humans. None of it is natural. We sit in offices built by people to do some job invented by some person, to be done on this computer machine that we created for ourselves, while we wear a uniform that arbitrarily became the clothing we wore to work. Then we go home, riding in a car, a totally unnatural machine, to a home that we didn't build, full of junk we didn't actually want to buy. Clearly, there is a level of truth to these ideas. Then it's important to look at the conclusions the film draws. The film says that our lives are meaningless now, and maybe they've always been meaningless. And because of this, we should tear everything to the ground, even our own bodies. This conclusion is where you as the critical thinking viewer must analyze and decide what you think. What do you think about the ideas the film presents and the conclusions it makes? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is this the correct way to live or is there another way? This legitimate challenge to the beliefs you hold is why the film resonated. It has a clear, real philosophical conflict, something that few films actually have. So how did it build this philosophical conflict clearly into the film? By using characters. The characters in the story hold beliefs in regards to the central philosophy of the film, and then they take action based upon their beliefs. The narrator realizes that his world is fake, shallow, and totally meaningless. It's here that he meets Tyler Durden. Tyler believes our culture is totally shallow and meaningless, so he takes action to destroy himself and destroy society. Tyler believes you only become free when you hit rock bottom, so he tries to pull people to their rock bottom. Marla also holds similar beliefs, that life is meaningless and that she is ready to die at any moment. Marla's philosophy of life is that she might die at any moment. The tragedy, she said, was that she didn't. 
Marla creates chaos just like Tyler does. And the chaos they create is to show the narrator and you, the viewer, that the system we live in is devoid of any meaning. The entire plot is built upon Tyler continuing to challenge the narrator's beliefs and to take him further into this nihilistic viewpoint. This is how the film ties the philosophical ideas to the actual external action. The different plot points of the story all relate to the core philosophical conflict. And this is what you want to create in your own story. The external conflicts the characters face aren't simply external obstacles. They are also philosophical challenges to what the characters believe. And the actions the characters take reveal their worldview to us, the audience. Fight Club is a great example of how strong philosophical conflict can actually save a film. If you look at the structure of Fight Club, you will find a story that's actually pretty disjointed. A few of the major turning points simply just happen in the story, without any real cause and effect. There are scenes and sequences that probably should have been cut, and the film's runtime sits at around two and a half hours, and you really feel the film's length when you watch it. So if structure and story momentum is supposedly extremely important, why does this film continue to stay with us decades after its release? Because the story has a clear, interesting, philosophical conflict. Structure is not the most important part of your story. The most important elements are the philosophical ideas that are in conflict. This film presents a worldview, and it presented ideas that some people resonated with, making the film a cult classic. What Fight Club teaches us is that you can make mistakes in the structure and momentum of your story, yet still have a deeply impactful film if you are clear and focused on the philosophical conflict. So as a writer, what should you take away from this film? Analyze the film's philosophical conflict. Realize that the philosophical conflict is what made this a film that impacted people, and that great stories don't have to be perfect. There really isn't any such thing as a perfect story. If you can keep your philosophical conflict at the clear center of your story, then everything else will fall into place. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. And check out the podcast linked in the description. Thanks for watching.